Hi everyone. Today's video is a guide to employing HARMS in Falcon BMS 4.34. In this video, we'll cover each of the three different HARM targeting modes. The video will also be separated into chapters for easy reference. Before we begin, it's important to note a couple things. First is that this tutorial relies heavily on the Dash 3.4 manual, which can be found in the Docs folder of your Falcon BMS install. If you haven't already, it would be a good idea to locate that manual and read the section on harm employment. Secondly, this tutorial focuses on procedures rather than tactics. BMS 4.34 saw several upgrades to SAM behavior. The SAM track radar no longer emits constantly. Due to this behavior, harms are not guaranteed to kill the track radar. For purposes of this tutorial, I have removed the search radar to keep the track radars emitting. In the first section, we'll discuss using position or POS mode. This mode is used to fire a harm at a specific steer point looking for a specified emitting target. The first thing we'll do is flip master arm on and go over to air to ground mode. We'll then want to power on our harms and select our weapon page. The weapon page has several different elements. Uh, which we need to employ for this usage. OSB1 lets us select our mode. We've got position, we've got HAS, or harm sensor, and DL mode is not implemented. OSB2 lets us change our threat table. You can see how the threats on the left side of the MFD are changing as I select the different tables. Mm. These are used to hand off specific threats to the harm to tell the harm which emitter it should look for. Now you can only hand off one at a time. You see how that emitter at the top changes based on which OSB I press. The third OSB lets us change the firing parameters of the harm um, there are three here. There's EOM, which is Equations of Motion, which is the most precise. It turns the harm seeker on very late in the flight profile. Uh, allows for a very precise shot if you know um, that you've planned a threat at that exact steer point uh, through the 2D window. If you've reconned a target and set it there and you know that the SAM is not moving. EOM is the most precise mode. That's the one you want to use. Range unknown, RUK, is the opposite. It turns the seeker on very early and in the flight profile and gives it a much wider field of view. It's used for when you don't know exactly where that threat is, but you think it's somewhere around a designated steer point. Prebeefed is kind of in the middle. Prebeefed mode gives it a wider field of view, uh, but turns it on a little bit after the range unknown, but before the EOM mode. That's used for uh, if you've dropped a PPT somewhere very close to a threat, but you haven't assigned it a um, specific steer point using the recon in 2D. Now, you'll note that we have this SA2 in front of us that's tracking us. You'll also see a bunch of threats that I've labeled in the HSD. There's an SA-2 in front of us, SA-3 off to the side, and SA-4 behind that. There's a handful of different emitters I've thrown in this mission. For right now, we want to hand off this SA-2 that's emitting. So let's select the two from the weapon table. You can see a bunch of additional symbology appear. This tells, it that, tells us that the harm will be looking for an SA-2. It tells us that it will be fired at steer point three, which is our currently selected steer point. That will always be the currently selected steer point. So if we want to change the location the harm is fired to, we'll need to change that steer point. You can do this either through the ICP or through the HSD. If I know that I would like it to fire at this SA4 position, I can just move the cursor around and TMS up over here. And you can see I'm now looking at steer point 68 and it's handed steer point 68 to the harm. 
let's go back to 0.3 because I know that steer point 3 is co-located on RSA2. I'm going to leave it in pre-brief mode because I didn't set it precisely on top of the SA2. I just know it's pretty close. You can also see below the steer point an estimated time of flight and an estimated impact time. I'm currently in freeze mode, so this impact time keeps changing. Underneath that, you have the station that the harm is on. You can see the other station over here. A good thing to remember is that you can hand off specific threats to specific uh, hard points. And so if I wanted to change a hard point over here, and I want this to look for an SA6, I can set that up. I can even change the uh, tracking mode. Leave this in, say, range unknown. Say it's a mobile SA6. Okay, you can see how hard point three keeps my Pre-brief mode, looking for an SA2, and hard point seven has this SA6 in range unknown. Switch back to steer point three and hard point three, and let's unpause. You can see the field of view window flashing. That tells me that I'm in the wider field of view mode. I've got my launch indicator on the right side of the HUD. Tells me with a launch uh, range carrot that I'm within range. And there's the SA2 locking me up. Let's go ahead and pickle on this target. Magnum. You can see the harm loft. After I've fired, you'll see this symbology move upwards on the weapon page. Okay, well I've got 28 seconds to impact at steer 3, looking for a, an SA-2. Okay, with 20 seconds to impact, Normally I wouldn't stay nose hot like this, but I'm going to see if we can see the impact here. And you can see the harm is timed out. Well, there was a flash over there. That was probably the explosion. And you can see the burning wreckage of a track radar down there. That's the basics of how to use POS mode. In the second section, we'll discuss using the harm in HAS, or harm as sensor mode. Whereas POS mode allows us to employ harms against pre-brief targets, HAS mode is much more useful for pop-up threats. We'll come down and change our mode over to HAS. And you can see this new page. There's several important features of the HAS page which we need to note. OSB2 allows us to change the weapon table, which is shown on the left side. You can see as I press this button, it cycles through different emitting radar types. You can also see, after I've pressed that button, that that SA5 has disappeared. This page only shows the threats that are listed on that particular table. That allows us to deconflict with different threat types. Let's go back to table one. And you can see the SA5 pop back up. You can also see a list up at the top. If there were several different emitters, you would see all those different emitter types show up in this list. OSB3 lets us change the field of view direction. You can see currently it's in a wide field of view, straight ahead. There is a center, which is a narrow center field of view. Left field of view. And a right field of view. Let's go back to wide here. 
You can see on the search page, we can also turn off specific threats. So if I didn't want to see any SA3s or SA4s, I could turn those off. And this UFC button is not implemented. The RS button resets the page and TI is not implemented. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go poke this SA3 here and see if I can get it to pop up. Let's unpause. And there's the SA3 and you can see this SA3 pop up right here. Now, if I wanna hand this off to the missile, all I have to do is TMS up. Now, ideally you wanna get this pretty close to Pause that there. You want to get this pretty close to the center of the missile seeker. If it's too far away, the missile won't see it. It will come off the rail, go straight, and it will never see the target. In this case, it's directly in front of us. And I can see that it's somewhere within this seeker field of view. It's on pause. Magnum. Come off to the right. And you can see the missile launch. You'll notice in the HAS page, we don't get a timeout. But you can see that flash. That's the track radar. And that is how you use HAS mode. In the third section, we'll discuss using HARMS using the HARM Attack Display, or HAD page, in the MFD. It's important to note that the HAD page only works if you've outfitted the aircraft with the HTS, or HARM Tracking Sensor, pod, from the 2D loadout menu. First we'll switch over to air-to-ground mode. We'll flip master arm on, and we'll give power to the HARMS and we'll select the HAD page. You'll notice the HAD page is very similar to the HSD page. It has many of the same elements, like distance rings, cardinal directions with a north flag, and own aircraft position. It also shows the current steer point lines in green. The additional elements, like the white outline, are specific to the HAD page. This white outline is the approximate range of the harms at your current airspeed and altitude. This is a dynamic ring and will change based on uh, how high you are, because obviously if you are a little higher, the harms have a little bit more range. All of the letters and numbers correspond to either detected radar emitters or previously detected radar emitters. The S indications are search radars, and other letters and numbers indicate track radars. Two for an SA-2, three for an SA-3, and for Nike, etc. If you want a full list, it's recommended to check out the Dash 3-4 manual in the Docs folder. Each of these letters and numbers has a color indication as well. Green means the Radar is no longer emitting, but was previously detected as emitting. Yellow means the radar is currently emitting. And red, when flashing, means that the radar is currently tracking. So we can tell that all of these green search radars are no longer emitting, that all of these yellow radars are currently emitting, and that this SA-2 and SA-3 track radar are currently active. We can also correlate information on the harm attack display with our RWR. You can see several things on the RWR. There's an SA-2 to about 11 o'clock, which corresponds with this track radar. And there's two numbers here. Let's deconflict those. There's an SA-3, which is here. And then there's an SA-5, probably somewhere off in the distance. Yep, there's the SA-5 right there. In order to select a target, 
from the HID page. All we need to do is slew the target cursor over to an emitter and TMS up. If the emitter is very close to another emitter, say a search radar, we can either pinky switch or use OSB3 to enter one of the EXP modes, which should zoom in a little bit and allow us to deconflict the radars. Once we've selected a target, it will be outlined with a white box. And at that point, we can fire harms. You can see the range caret here to tell us that we're within range, and the flashing indicator to tell us that we can fire. Unpause the sim here. For the best solution, we'd like the track radar to be track actively tracking our aircraft. This would be indicated by a red number. You can see here that now the SA-2 and the SA-3 are both actively tracking, and that I'm still outside of the weapon engagement zones. Let's select this SA-3, still within range, and hold pickle, magnum. I do not need to maintain that track on the HAD page. I can deselect it and go select the SA-2. Magnum. And I fired on both of those targets. There is no countdown like there is in some of the other modes, but you do have the active indication on the HAD page to let you know that the radar is still active. See that SA-3 turned off. It's possible my harm missed that target because of that, but the SA-2 is still emitting. That SA-2 should be right there. And shortly, oh, there's the flash. And that's the SA-2 emitter. It is possible I did get the SA-3 as well. Uh, it's important to note that this page only tells you emitting radars. It does not tell you if you've actually destroyed the target. You'll have to verify that with other means. Because this method is so simple and gives you the best situational awareness, the harm attack display is generally the preferred method to use harms. However, as previously illustrated, it's not the only method. That wraps it up for the harm tutorial. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching everybody.